the reaction quotient. When we look at an e equilibrium reaction and we're given concentrations, how can we figure out is that equilibrium going to, you know, is it going to go to e equilibrium by going in the forward direction or the reverse direction? Sometimes it's obvious. If you have zero products, then it's, of course it's going to go in the forward direction. But many times you can't tell what direction it's going to go in. So the reaction quotient is something that tells us what direction um, the reaction will go to achieve equilibrium. So this is predicting reaction direction um, that's not at equilibrium. So the reaction quotient is given the symbol capital Q, and just like we can have equilibrium constants in terms of concentration, moles per liter, or pressures of gases in atmospheres, we can do this with pressures or concentrations. It is calculated exactly the same way. So the expression for Q is the same as for K, the equilibrium constant. The difference is the reaction quotient is calculated somewhere other than at equilibrium. When you get to equilibrium, <coughs> Q will equal K. So we're just calculating an equilibrium constant that isn't really a constant at a different set of circumstances. Does that make any sense? So we can predict direction by looking at the relative size of the reaction quotient <coughs> compared to the equilibrium constant. If the quotient is smaller than the equilibrium constant, the reaction will go towards the right in the forward direction. It'll make more products. If the quotient is larger than the equilibrium constant, it will go to the left towards the reactants. At equilibrium, they will be equal. So at a given temperature, the equilibrium constant has one value. But the reaction quotient can have many values. It depends on the current state of the reaction. And as it progresses towards equilibrium, it's going to get closer and closer to the equilibrium constant. Consider the reaction and its equilibrium constant. A reaction mixture contains NO2 at 0 0.0255 molar and N2O4 at 0 0.0331 molar. Calculate QC and determine the direction in which the reaction will proceed. So calculating QC is the same process as um, calculating K, but we're just going to use the concentrations given. So QC will equal the concentration of the product squared divided by the concentration of the reactant. And we're going to put in the numbers. Uh, NO2 is 0 0.0255. And that's going to be divided by, oops, that's squared, divided by 0 0.0331. Point zero two five five squared divided by point zero three three one equals so the value of the quotient is point zero one nine six. Did I do that right? <coughs> so then we we're gonna compare this to the equilibrium constant. Which is bigger? Q. Q. This is larger than that number. So in order for this number to become that number, do I have to increase the react I'm sorry, increase the product concentrations or decrease the product concentrations? Decrease. If this concentration gets smaller, then Q will get smaller and eventually get to the equilibrium constant. Does that make sense? So that tells me that this reaction is going to proceed in the reverse direction. It's going to make more of the N2O4 
and you'll have less of the NO2 so that this ratio can equal the equilibrium constant. Yeah? So, so Q is kind of like an equilibrium constant, but before, while it's trying to reach equilibrium. So it's an equilibrium, it, it's, an ex, it's like a non-equilibrium expression. Yeah. It's like while it's yeah, while it's going to equilibrium, this is going to tell us what direction the reaction is going as it goes to equilibrium. Well, one of the reasons that you'd want to look at this is if you were trying to do an ice table with this reaction, um, you, you would need to know, well, is this one decreasing or increasing? Is this concentration increasing or decreasing? Right? So you might not know. But QC will tell you which direction it's going. So here we have QC larger than K. So the reaction will go to the left towards the reactants. <coughs> Another question? Anybody? So the previous slide that said, well, if QC is greater than K or QC is less than K, I have a hard time remembering those. It just doesn't make a lot of sense to me. But this makes sense to me. OK, I calculated QC. This is bigger than KC. How do these numbers need to change? Because at equilibrium, they have to be equal. I need to make this number smaller. So I need to make the, the numerator smaller, the denominator larger. So the reaction goes in the reverse. When QC is smaller than K, and we need to make it larger, we do the opposite. We want to increase the product concentrations, decrease the reaction concentrations, reactant. Okay, that makes sense? 